Hi guys, thanks for joining me on this journey of joy. We are going to talk about something that you may not realize you're interested in. People have cabin fever right now, coronavirus is going around, people are scared, and people wanna get out of the house. What to do? Well, hello, there's always your front yard that might need a little raking, a little grooming. You could start planning your own landscape. You don't have to hire a professional to do it. We have Google at our fingertips and well, I've just received my first box in the mail of planning my own landscape around our yard. Now we did start, truthfully, a few weeks ago with all of this and these have just arrived. I didn't know that little plants like this could actually arrive intact in the mail, but I'm always pleasantly surprised and I should have trusted the system a little more. So here's how I started and maybe it can help you while you have cabin fever and you're stuck inside. So I started researching, okay, we're in a hot environment here in South and Central Texas around San Antonio, Austin, the hill country. So what sort of plants will do well here? I really wanted more of a desert landscape. I wasn't looking for the butterfly garden. I wasn't looking to do a vegetable garden. I wanted something that was more drought resistant, something called Xeriscaping. That's spelled X-E-R-I, scaping. A lot of people think it's zero, like the number, no, it starts with an X. All right, side point there. Sidebar. So going back to this, I wanted something that was a little drought resistant and I started picking cacti and succulents and then I also realized that you really have to know your hardiness zones. What does that mean for a first time landscaper? Well, hardiness zones are how low a temperature can go before your plant might die. So here in San Antonio, we're usually in a hardiness zone eight or nine. That means that any plant that has a number lower than eight or nine usually will be okay here in our environment because uh, hardiness zone of four, it's a plant that can normally take ne negative 20 temperatures, which I don't know if it's ever gotten that cold in San Antonio. I'm sure somewhere, at some point maybe, but as of most recent years, I don't recall a temperature that low. Normally we, the lowest we get is about 17 degrees. So. I have planted cacti in my yard, golden barrels, queen agave, uh, reginas, I will show you those in just a little bit, but I also wanted something that would complement it, and these are Boulder Blue Fatuscas, and they are something that require a little bit of shade, or they don't necessarily require, they can enjoy a little shade, and not all of my xeriscaping is in areas that receives full sun, so I needed something that would receive that shade well and then also have something called red creeping thyme right here i'm very excited about this because even though it's red creeping thyme it actually has a pink layer it spreads very fast and all the plants that i've chosen for my garden are thought to be deer resistant there's really not anything out there called deer proof and we love the deer here in our neighborhood but most of the plants that are deer resistant tend to have prickly parts on them, like a golden barrel cacti, or the queen Victoria agave that I mentioned earlier, or also have some scents to them, like thyme is actually an herb, T-H-Y-N-E. We've also planted some Spanish and English lavender out there as well, so come on outside and I'll show you those. All right, guys, you'll have to forgive this because we had a storm last night, but we have brought rocks in so that we can do some of the zero escaping and underneath it is a weed barrier and then of course we have this retainer here and then this soon will be covered with grass in this area but this is one of my golden barrels that requires a ton of sun then over here we have that queen victoria agave that i was talking about i believe i may have called it queen victoria regina earlier but that is uh, regine is associated with its actual scientific name so it's queen victoria agave and they propagate well because this was actually part of that plant and we were able to separate it. So that's a great way to make more of the plants that you have. And then we have some English lavender right here that we're really excited about. And then over here, we have another golden barrel. They need full sun. So as you can see, as we look up this area, I've set out our Boulder Blue Fatuska grass, which will be beautiful as we get it into the ground. So this is kind of an idea of what we're doing. And again, it stormed last night. so. Also over here, you'll see that we have more lavender where all these green flags are is where that Fatuska grass is gonna go. And then we have some Spanish lavender in this area. And then we are trying to bring back to life a Russian sage 
bush that one of the local nurseries, Rainbow Nurseries, uh, said it was pretty much dying, but we could give it a shot. All right, I've given you a peek of our garden and what I hope it will look like in a few weeks. I have to get to planting, but here's for, to you planning your own garden and maybe these times and uncertainty have you thinking you want your own vegetable garden, sustainability, able to grow your own tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, green beans, you name it. For me, I have lavender now out there. I have thyme. All of these are herbs that I can cook with. These are also some herbs that I can create nice healing oils with, and I plan to add a lot more. So stay tuned over the next few weeks, next few months. We'll be adding a lot more to our landscape. No need to have cabin fever, guys. Get out there, enjoy your yards, and good luck. Stay safe, and thanks for joining me on this journey of joy.